All right, nerds. I lulled you into a false sense of security with my long, polite, philosophy of blitz video. And now, it's time for the equally as long, but somehow less polite, Tony's Congealy Blitz system ranking video. Nah, it'll be quick. Here's my disclaimer. Uh, I hate Blitz. I hate Blitz so much that I spent a frankly unreasonable amount of time developing a system to spend the least amount of time blitzing as I can. When I started succeeding in reaching goals and targets easier, milestones, whatever, uh, my stream would ask to help them, and it has. So that's the long and short of why I'm going through this. We're going to jump right into my ranking system and uh, how to classify your own blitz teams. So I use one ranking system for everything in this game. Character tiers, teams, blitz, no different. It's broken down into four tiers. Uh, you may have seen this kind of ranking system before from any other game in the world, but I just choose to use it because it makes sense to me. I find it easy to follow, hope you do too. The four tiers uh, is part of the Sabbath system. S-A-B-T. S tier, A tier, B tier, and tier trash tier. Uh, and I'll go through a little bit of what they mean specifically for Blitz, but ultimately, S is great, A is good, B is meh, and Trash is... Come on. So, we'll start with S tier, right? S tier is cream of the crop. Uh, your personal sure-to-win teams. Uh, any team that you use that's capable of winning fights in 8-3 consistently, where you're punching up against real teams with higher power than yours. For example, if you frequently see the defenders in your 8-3 matchups, any team, regardless of their power, that can beat the defenders, that, that's, a, that's an S-tier team for you. That's guaranteed wins. Guaranteed points are guaranteed. And guaranteed, you know, close enough. Uh, there are a number of pretty stock S-tier teams. Uh, Brotherhood, Fury Shield, Power Armor. They beat the defenders, but they can pretty much put up a good fight against any of the other matchups that might be coming up. So, it's good to have those as, like, fallbacks in case you don't want to spend time doing testing. So you just basically know teams that are standard at, at winning an S tier. But ultimately, it is your, your fight. You know, you're going to be the person who decides which teams win in a 3. Your roster, their power, it's all going to come into play. So it's a very dynamic tier, uh, and it moves with your roster's growth as you grow. The good news is, the more of the S tier teams you have, the higher your score ceiling goes. And if you watched the last video, uh, I talked about PPR, points per rotation. The more points per rotation you're, you're guaranteed, so overall, you're going to be capable of a lot more. Uh, the next tier is the A tier, uh, and the, like I said, the good teams. These are the teams that maybe get a fight in an A3, but you know sometimes there's no good matchups, or... They just can't beat the defenders reliably. Maybe it's the power. Maybe it's a problem with the team themselves. But they still win a good amount in 8 in general. 8-0, uh, 8-1, The ramp-up teams where you still start seeing some mishmashes and some random characters. Uh, and you're not really punching up 30 to 80,000 points. Those kind of teams. Uh, a good example of an A team is the Spider-Verse. The original Spider-Verse, uh, the Avengers, sometimes the actual Defenders themselves, uh, as you progress through your roster, they, they tend to have a hard time finding a suitable matchup. Like, uh, I wouldn't necessarily take the Spider-Verse into the Guardians of the Galaxy due to Drax, but, you know, if you went down, uh, if you took an intentional loss with one of your lower teams, went down to the 8-0 multiplier, you'd probably find a better matchup of, of fights for you. And at this point, uh, in your blitzing, any points you make, significantly better than zero. A loss is zero points. Any win is plus points, and plus points is better. Uh, it doesn't add much time to your rotation, but you know, taking an intentional loss with the aim team is not really going to hurt you. But it's a great way to keep your numbers going up, up, up. Uh, and because of that, much like the S teams, the more of these teams you have, the higher your PPR and the higher you can consistently score playing uh, with as least as possible. Then we have the B teams, and 
they're like almost good teams, if that makes sense. They there's maybe have some synergy like Ant Man Wasp or the Hand Team. Uh, they they have some good kits, uh, individual characters. But due to like power level or matchups, bad luck or maybe lack of heavy investment on, on on your part, like you haven't put a lot of effort into them, they're not reliable. Uh, like I, I mentioned before. Almost any team with Ant Man and Loss is is pretty solidly a B team, uh, just because. So since they're unreliable, you don't really want to use these teams as high in the eight multiplier. But that doesn't mean they're useless. That means that you get to use these teams in your opening blitz rotation to beat those nodes that they're definitely going to take out. You also tend to see these B teams as you're climbing up the ladder in Blitz. You know, the uh, the Nebula, Punisher, Crossbones, Thanos, and uh, Gamora teams. You know, the, the teams that are just characters I have that are the same power. Those, are, those qualify as, as B teams. They're good characters. They have good effects. They'll probably win. You're smarter than the AI. But once you start working on higher multipliers and trying to punch up, Mm, you're not going to get there. The good news is, every tier is dynamic, as I mentioned before, and the B tier teams are always just one thing away from, from ranking up to either A or S. Uh, you you can think about it like, you know, the, uh, the Fantastic Four without Sue Storm. They may be great, but Sue Storm may be the missing piece. Or, or any synergy or, or pre-built team might be like that. They're, they're missing a piece, they're just not powerful enough, they can't go there. And then once you get that piece, all of a sudden you do a fight, wow, this team is winning. The good thing about B teams is there is no risk into trying stuff out. So if you're in the 8 multiplier and you look down and you go, hey, maybe I can get a free win with my B team, go for it. Worst case scenario, if you realize it's going horribly for you, just quit the fight. Just, you know, done. You don't lose your multiplier. Uh, it's not cheating, like it's part of the system, so don't feel bad about that. Like it is, it is designed to do that, and it costs you the two minutes it takes to test. And if you get a free win, congratulations, it's free points. How could you be mad? You know, uh, points are great. Points PPR goes up, PPR goes up, value goes up. And it, it, the B tier is the the highest growth space for most of your teams uh, because it always involves some kind of investment or perhaps a. A new character release that all of a sudden this team now just wins they beat defenders reliably they beat bkt for some reason anything like that uh b teams are, are where a good portion of the roster is at the beginning of your like uh, trek into being a better blitzer but as you grow and you kind of build you'll be able to build more teams uh, the b and of course now we have the trash tier teams uh, surprisingly, not a huge part of the roster lives here in general. There aren't that many trash tier characters, but most people have a very large number of trash tier characters, uh, and that is due to a combination of three things. Characters that are just not good in the game. Hydra, Ravagers, uh, AIM until the rework, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That, you know, they're missing a lot. They, they're not good on their own. They have low damage numbers. Uh, so those guys relatively be quickly become trash uh, because they're just not worth the investment. And then there's the characters that aren't bad, but you just haven't worked on. You know, uh, personally, I could say uh, Nebula is a character I haven't worked on at all. So I can't really win with her in high multipliers. Uh, that goes with my America Chavez. I get yelled at all the time on stream because I have put no effort into my America Chavez. I know she'll be better. I know she'll be part of a good team when I bring her up, but I haven't. So because I haven't, she falls into the trash tier team category. That Just because it's a trash tier team doesn't mean it's useless. Uh, it actually has two uses for you. The first is it clears out the tier one and tier two fights, the really easy fights that you have in a blitz. So you're going to go through the bottom of your roster, you know, the, the kind of thing that anyone will tell you how to blitz, start with the bottom of your roster, those are your trash teams. Use them at the bottom, get out of tier one, 
you know, the bigger your roster is, you might be able to get out of tier two. Uh, this way you're starting to fight in fights that give you real amount of points, and it climbs you towards that tier eight multiplier, which is all in all the most important thing you can do. Uh, in general, these teams aren't very reliable after tier two. So if you have too many trash teams, it, it, it becomes better to just kind of use the teams that are strong among them. But ultimately, trash teams tend to be temporary until either a rework comes, you invest in characters, or a, an individual character comes out that makes them viable. Like I might have mentioned with AIM and Graviton. Who knows? Uh, later in the game, the second reason to great is because you can sacrifice them to the gods of value when you're in 8-3 to guarantee a loss that will put you all the way back down to 8-0 and give you three fights that should be more manageable for your A teams or even maybe your B teams who just quite can't get there. So you're you're maximizing every character in your roster to the best of their ability. Uh, so don't feel overwhelmed or underwhelmed if you're noticing, oh man, I have a lot of characters that are like a hundred or a thousand power. Well, they have uses. They're not getting you the most points, but they are helping you maximize your PPR by letting you control the fights that you see. So more or less, trash teams aren't the worst. They have some potential of getting better as time progresses, not as much as B, but that's where it goes. That's pretty much everything as far as the tier, and I think it's pretty easy to come by. Uh, I, and I, I think most of you guys know what this was before we even started getting into it, right? Like, you knew who the best were, you knew who were okay, most of the Avengers teams, you know, you knew who were like, eh. and then obviously I think we all know Hydra's trash right now. So. You have a good understanding of how I rank characters, and this is going to be important because uh, this video is over, but the last video of this series, my next video, is going to piece together the philosophy of Blitz and my tears to start actually telling people how to Blitz better. Uh, be about the same kind of video, a little bit different gameplay footage, but hopefully it's helpful to you. And I just wanted to tell you guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli. I'll catch you later.